Come in. Welcome. Welcome to Mystery Theater. I am Hyman Brown. Since time immemorial, stories have begun with the classic phrase, Once Upon a Time. Then to the avid and eager listener would come a history of love, hate, adventure, horror, every emotion the teller wanted to convey. But history, like all words, is not necessarily what we think it means. Its basic definition is a narrative of events connected with a real or imaginary object, person, or career. Note, it does not confine itself to the past. So, here is a history of the future, the kind that begins supposing if... We recognize your presence, daughter. What is your desire? Not mine, but the earth creature's. He demands an audience with you. Demands? He says that if he is not returned immediately, his people will send their ships against us and shoot the mothership out of the sky. Our mystery drama, Enemy from Space, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars... Mandel Kramer. I will be back shortly with Act One. This is the year of 2029. President Winston Alexander is midway through his second term a commanding figure on the world stage who has brought America to a new surge of leadership. The unfortunate breakdown of arm limitation talks have more than ever isolated the two superpowers and with nuclear proliferation of fact, the only hope of world peace is that the two superpowers are at last nearing a major accord that will mean peace. This is where we stand on this fateful night at exactly 3 a.m., February 25th, 2029. This is Central Command, Triple Red Alert. Repeat, this is CENCOM, Triple Red Alert. Attention all units, highest priority. This is Alert AAA. This is a Triple Red Alert. An unidentified flying object has pierced the DMZ and has now landed on the front lawn of the White House. Mr. President. Mr. President! What is it, Andy? Why are you knocking so frantically at Father's door? I don't know, Ginny. We may be under attack. Now, under... Yeah, stick with me until I check on your father. I... I'd better try the door. Mr. President, I... Good Lord, no! He's not in his bed. Oh, where is he, Andy? Where is Daddy? Daddy! Daddy! The window is wide open. That thing is still that, there. Jenny, come back. They must have taken it. Jenny, don't show yourself to the enemy. Get down. Get down. What for? They're not paying any attention to us. That is some kind of warcraft out there. They might fire on you. I don't care what they do to me. They've got my father. Oh, stop them, Andy. Stop them somehow. Jimmy, by now, every piece of equipment in the U.S. has been alerted to stop whatever the heck that thing is. Oh, that nobody wants to see the president kidnapped. I'm... But we can't bring any firepower to bear on him without risking your father's life. Well, what are you and the rest of you little soldiers going to do? Well, I can't tell you exactly. There are contingency plans for things like this? What? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a member of CENCOM, but there must be something that... Attention, please. Attention. Who's that? It's coming from a spacecraft. There is no cause for alarm. We come in peace. This is Commander Varg aboard the spaceship. We are a communications vessel from the matrix of the mothership Niklo 7. We seek information only and have borrowed your President Alexander in order to get it. 
He is quite safe. When we have completed our talk, he will be returned unharmed. I don't believe him, Andy. Why doesn't he let Daddy say something? To reassure you, we will let President Alexander talk to you now. I realize this is very unusual for everyone's best interests. I ask you to call off all alerts and to take no action for the next 24 hours. I am assured by my, my unexpected hosts that I am in no personal danger, nor is anyone else. I am being taken to meet Commander Vard's superiors for some as yet unrevealed reason. I have agreed to a truce for 24 hours. If I am not returned by then, I ask Congress to put the nation on full war footing for its defense. Alexander. Oh, but just a sec. Oh, oh, come in, Andy. Any news? No, not yet. Oh, do I have to be cooped up here like this? Shinny, do I even have to answer that? You know what it's like out there? Panicsville. Oh, what do you think it's like in here? Inside me. Oh, hold me, Andy. Uh, Hey, I got you, Slugger. Now, hang in. What's happening to us, Andy? To the whole world? Who are they? I don't know, Ginny. Nobody knows yet. Where are they taking Dad and why? Don't you think I'd give my eye teeth to be able to answer those questions? Oh, never mind you. What about all those fancy tracking systems, our big sophisticated strategic command, or whatever you call them? Didn't they follow that saucer thing or whatever it was? Yeah, from the second after it lifted off, the darn thing just disappeared. Where? How? Darling, I'm a lucky little boy in the Air Force who ended up a president's aide-de-camp and I hope pretty soon his son-in-law, but I am not a scientist. Oh, don't try to waffle, Andy. You must have some idea. How could this spacecraft slip all our defenses? Well, first off, it has some kind of radar negator. Otherwise, it never could have gotten here. And second, who knows what this craft is vectored on. It could be traveling on a Mobius curve that took it upside down into some other space continuum or through a galactic time window. Oh. All I know is we can't pick it up electronically by laser, satellite, spectroscope, nothing. It's just gone. Oh, and Dad with it? Gone? No, Gina, he's all right. What makes you so sure? You heard the man. What man? Well, whatever he was. Varg, the spaceship's commander. He promised he'd return your father after they talked to him. What do they, whoever they are, want to talk to him about? Search me. Oh, don't give the big stone face to me, Andy Harris. You've got to have some idea of what's going on. I swear to you, Ginny, I do not have one clue. And if they don't return Dad within 24 hours, then what? I I guess we go on full wartime footing. Against what? Well, that's the big question, Ginny. It's bad enough that we have to take a step into the last unthinkable war, but to have to make that step without knowing the enemy is kind of mind-boggling. Do we even know that they are the enemy? Yeah, I think President Alexander answered that one for us in the speech we heard. He was the one that set up the time limit. And the way I read it, he wasn't running all that scared. I think he was laying it on the other guys that they weren't dealing for much strength. You really honestly believe that, Andy? I don't know what I believe. And neither does anyone else. This is the one contingency nobody ever figured to make plans for. Welcome, Varg. You were successful, I hear. I am always successful. It's nice to know someone has a good opinion of you. Someday I will make you sorry for your contempt for me. It isn't contempt, Varg. You're beneath that. Do not give yourself airs, Zeda, because you are half borrowed from the life stream. We modules are just as good as you. I don't intend to argue with you. Have you brought our hostage? He is just beyond the door. 
Can we get on with the business at hand before the Supreme One questions the delay? Oh, one of these days, Zadar. Open. You may come in, Mr. President. Thank you. This is Dr. Zadar. You will be in her control now. May I ask why I've been brought here, wherever I am? My instructions do not permit me to do so. Then I demand to be taken before this... this Supreme One. What is it you want of me? My desires are simple and quite practical, Mr. President. I am a doctor. A medical doctor? Yes. May I ask your name? Zeda. That's all? Dr. Zeda? Won't that serve? It's only identification, after all. Why am I here? As far as it concerns me, for a basic series of tests. Medical. I'm not applying to be a citizen of whatever state you represent. You have joined Nicholas Seven as a passenger. It is routine for you to be quarantined until we can determine that you are properly immunized. There isn't time for that. I thought I had made it quite clear to your Commander Varg that if I am not returned to Earth, or am not in contact with it within 24 hours... A state of war will exist between us and your country, whatever it's called. We have no country. I beg your pardon? We are survivors, limited to the travelers on this spaceship. Though this is a large cosmos in itself, we are not inconsequential. But we are a culture in search of a home. I don't understand exactly why I have been... Well, why mince words? Why I have been kidnapped... What function can I serve for you? I am not quite sure of that myself. It is something you will have to discuss with the Supreme One after I have finished my tests. Give me your arm, please. What for? I wish to take a blood sample. If you don't get me in to see your precious Supreme One, Dr. Zeta, you will have a bath of blood. My country, for its own protection, will throw all our might against you and blow you and your mother ship out of the sky. Not while you are hostage. Oh, yes. I would disappear with you. I am, after all, not indispensable. You mean you would permit your people to destroy you? I would expect them to if you were the enemy. Are you? First of all, I must carry out my tests. And then... I will seek an audience with the Supreme One and tell him you wish to appear before him. I bow in reverence before you, O oh my father. We recognize your presence, daughter. What is your desire? Not mine, but the Earth's creatures. He demands an audience with you. Demands? He says that if he is not returned immediately, his people will send their ships against us and shoot the mothership out of the sky. Fortunately, since we are in another time continuum, they cannot find us unless we choose to show ourselves. His threat and his demands are useless. He wants also to know why we have taken him and what it is you want of him. I want you to adapt him. Wash his brain clean so that we can send him back to fulfill our purpose. I don't think I can do that, Father. He is too strong. Then you must change him. Make him completely one of us. I don't know if that is possible. All things are possible. Did you not become completely one of us? Yes. So then shall he. But I can't do that without killing his... It is hard for me to describe to you, Oming, my father. Because we are different. It is you who are different. Do not fill me with old angers. Are you still prattling about the non-existent, what you call the soul? Did we not stamp that out of you? Yes, father. Then should we hesitate to destroy it in a stranger... I am not interested in President Winston Alexander, the earthling, except as he shall serve our needs. However you achieve the result, I want him fully conditioned to carry out those needs and our commands. Now remember... 
this is a story of supposing if. Supposing there was a mothership from some unimaginable planet coursing in space, looking for a new land to colonize, and supposing they singled out Earth and felt that it was their promised land. How much would they lay claim to? Or would they simply follow the pattern of colonialism and take it all? Mystery Theater will return shortly with Act Two. The United States, since its birth, has traditionally been a haven for all displaced persons who seek a new chance in life. By and large, with few exceptions, no country has welcomed the alien more generously. But alien in a science-oriented society is no longer a simple description of someone who may differ in minor ways, such as color, creed, or politics. Tomorrow's alien may come from a background so foreign that there is no hope there is no hope a world can be shared. You have been long, Dr. Zeta. What news do you bring? I am afraid not what you want to hear, President Alexander. You mean I am not to see your supreme one? He has commissioned me to be his ambassador. Well, under other circumstances, I couldn't be more charmed. Perhaps even under these. What do we have to discuss? Mr. Alexander... If that is the correct term to apply to you. It is perfectly correct. Except somehow between us, I... Yes. Well, I don't know what made me say that. Some... Some strange tug underneath everything makes me want to deny any formality between us. I must tell you, Mr. Alexander, you are wasting your time. I am not a woman as you conceive of women. Are you so sure? Yes. You must understand about us aboard this ship. We are only humanoids. You cannot judge us by your standards. Humanoids? Robots, if you prefer the word. Although it is not exact. Let me explain. The mother ship on which we are now traveling was named after the planet that was our home. Niklos Seven in the Adumbrian galaxy. Some generations ago, a supernova in our galaxy exploded. And in the Holocaust that swept across our planet, almost all of my ancestors were destroyed. Those that were left found in that environment that was left, the human body, as you would call it, could not be sustained. You mean there was no atmosphere? No air to breathe? What? Oh, there was atmosphere. Poisoned by radiation... And that forced us to adapt. To adapt in what way? Since the human body was eroded, we had to provide an envelope in which to sustain life. We developed what was essentially a machine, an engine wrapped in the simulacrum, the semblance of the human. And we powered it with the mind, the individual souls of those left alive. Well, if you were so successful... Why didn't you develop and recolonize your planet? Because, unfortunately, our atmosphere was not stable. And in the time following the Holocaust, we were left with no air to breathe and no way to adapt our robots to some other form of energy. The strongest of us set out on this ship to seek a home in another planet. And you have brought me here to discuss introducing you and your shipmates into our culture? Oh, no, Mr. President. There is nothing to discuss. It is my function to prepare you so that you will make it possible for us to take over your planet. How? It would be hard for me to explain. In storage, against the necessity for constant replacement, we have robots ready to be activated. You see this machine here. Machine? Perhaps you did not recognize it as such. Two rooms behind glass doors. In one, they are already placing your robot. My robot? 
He does not look much like you yet. But the electrodes they are attaching to him will be synchronized with the electrodes we attach to you. And when we are finished, he will be in every physical sense a simulacrum of you, a duplicate of you. And what happens to me? You become a husk to be discarded. What? Mm, an outmoded model, unable to function in the atmosphere of our new world. What new world? The one that will exist in the dust of radiation and the end of Earth. The world that all of us from Niklo 7 are going to build with your help. I will not be party to anything like this. You have no choice. Vog, seize him. No. Oh, 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 oh. All right, Vog. Put him in the transformer. Afternoon, Ginny. Afternoon, Andy. Oh, I've been dying till you got here. What's new? Uh, not a thing. No news of Dad? None. Oh, no. Well, what else is happening? Uh, what isn't? We've tried to keep it as secret as possible, but there are always leaks. Well, what is this? Uh, thank heavens the country doesn't know about it yet, and the press is capped, but the diplomatic wires are burning. What do they say? Well, they don't say anything, baby. They just ask. <gasps> Naveep has been on the hotline off and on all day with President Brusco. Well, what's his reaction? Uh, what's in it for them, first off? Then diplomatic regrets. They probably figure if we're going to be under attack from outside in space, it might be time for a little more cooperation. But we don't know yet that they are under attack. Baby, a pirate ship turns up on the White House lawn, and in spite of the greatest security set up in this old globe, they just take our president away like he was off for Disneyland? Hey, everybody's running scared because they don't know what's next. Baby, we don't know what we're up against. <laughs> This is President Alexander, aboard a shuttle spacecraft, returning me as promised to the White House at the pre-agreed time. I have been well treated and am in the best of health. No one need have any concern about me. I have just completed preliminary discussions with a friendly power from outer space, which will have dramatic and earth-shaking consequences for the safety of America and the whole world. I am aware that all our armed forces have been alerted. I ask them as President and Commander-in-Chief to extend safe conduct to the spaceship and allow it to land me and then depart in full safety. Where is it, Andy? I can hear it, but I can't see it. Uh, you, me, and everybody else, Jenny. I'll lay odds even radar and transcom haven't got a fix on it. But it can't be just invisible. Well, it could be. Probably sets up some sort of magnetic field which locks it out of all our sensors, including just plain old eyesight. But it sounds louder and louder. You can tell it's approaching. Ten to one, it doesn't have to. They just want to warn us they're on the way. You better keep to uh, one side of the window, Jenny. <gasps> there it is. See it, Andy? Uh, where? Oh, by the monument. It's skimming in like, like a frisbee. I wish that's all it was. Oh, you don't think anything's going to go wrong, do you? It sure had better not. Oh, Since that thing showed up in the first place, I got a hunch nothing's going right. Oh, Daddy! Virginia! Oh. It's all right. It's all right, baby. It's all right. Oh, it's been such a nightmare. It oh, was quite Daddy. an adventure. What are you doing still up? Is there anyone who's been aware of what's going on in the last 24 hours that sleep's been out of the question? Well, I hope the knowledge hasn't been too general. Oh, I wouldn't know. But Andy says not. He thinks they've been able to keep the lid on. I hope so. Oh, you're, you're okay, aren't you, Daddy? As you can see. Oh, but what went on? Why did they take you? Who are they? I uh, mean... No, 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 no. One question at a time. <laughs> and incidentally, let me close this door. Tell me. Who are they? What happened? First of all, they are friends. Friends? I shudder to think of what might be about to happen to our world if they hadn't warned me. Warned you of what? A monstrous plot to destroy America. What? An unholy alliance to take over and rule the world, if there is any left of it. What do you mean? It's too complex to explain to you, Virginia. There is a secret alliance between a group of mineral-rich nations and our main enemy, which is called the Consortium. The Consortium? They are poised to unleash a massive strike against us, which would wipe us out before we had a chance to reply. Now that plot has been uncovered. 
I, we have an opportunity to, to treat with them, or at least with our knowledge, to instigate a preventive strike. Thanks to our friends from outer space, we have a chance to buy some time, or force enough, to hammer out a new agreement. If not, we must move first. That's the decision that I have to make. And unfortunately, it must be made alone. Oh, poor Dad. Like you always say, if you only could have shared it with Boots. Um, Boots? Mom, what you used to call her. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> but what, what does that have to do with anything? This is a decision of state. <laughs> Is it six audience? Commander Varg, oh, Supreme One. I have a little time left. My light is growing dim. You shall be my successor, and I will have you bound in union to my daughter. In her burns the only flame which can guarantee us immortality. You must guard it first. Of all things. You said for me, great father. I ask you about the earthling. Varg has delivered him back to his planet. Has this module, this simulacrum, been properly vested with our ideas and desires? Yes, father. Then we control this robot completely? Yes, father. And the real, what is his name, Alexander has been eliminated? I didn't hear your answer, daughter. The real Alexander has ceased to be a threat. Mm. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, who, who is it? Andy, it's me, Jim. Um, uh, hold it, I'll, I'll be right there. Uh, what is it, Jenny? What are you doing wandering around at five in the morning? Andy, I'm scared. Can I come in? Mm. I don't know how to say this, so it makes sense. You're the only one I can say it to. Say what? Uh, come on, baby, spill it. Andy, the man they brought back in the spacecraft? Uh-huh. That's not my dad. It's not President Winston Alexander. There's just no way that is my father. As President of the United States, Winston Alexander holds the fate of the world in less than one hand. In cold fact, in the finger that may press the button to unleash atomic warfare to end the world. President Alexander has been replaced by a robot, activated by a power in space that has everything to gain from the end of Earth and nothing to lose. I shall return shortly with Act Three. While America sleeps safer in the year 2029, secure that her kidnapped president has been returned safe and sound, his daughter is the only one to question what we know to be the truth, that the man who sits at one end of the hotline is a robot from outer space, controlled and operated at the whim of the leader of a spacecraft, desperate to find a home for his alien cargo. Only President Alexander's daughter faintly glimpses the truth. Can her instinct be enough to stop disaster? What are you talking about, Ginny? I tell you, he is not my father. Well, you mean they brainwashed him or something? I don't know what I mean, Andy. It's just... It's just, I, I, I don't know, little things... He is not my father. What little things? Oh, I don't know. Like, he calls me Virginia. Now, that's, that's funny. That's strange. Dad never called me anything but Jen. And he doesn't... I, I, I don't know how to describe it. It, it. it just doesn't feel right. Ginny, we've all been through the ringer and been pretty shook. Now, you're just jumping at shadows. I'm not. At, at Boots. Huh? Boots. That was Dad's name for my mother. Dad could never forget it. Ginny, your mother's been dead for 15 years. But you don't forget things like that. Dad wouldn't. He can't forget his own name for her. 
that he loved to call her? If it isn't your father, who is it? I don't know. I... Oh, Andy, do you think I'm losing my mind? Because there's something about him that scares me. It scares me right down to my heels. Wake up, Mr. President Alexander. Uh, Wake up. Uh, well. That's such a long name. Oh. We must find something more suitable. What did your wife call you? What? What did you say? Did your wife have a name for you? My, my, my wife? Ruth? Boots? She, uh... Yes, she, uh... She, she, she called me Wink. Wink? Yes, short, short for Winston. It was a silly name, but... I liked it. Wink. I like it, too. Wink. Well, where am I? Where I brought you. To my bed. To your bed? I, I can't stay here. You must. Where else can I hide you? Hide me? Why, why, why must I be hidden? Because I should have destroyed you once I made your other self. What other self? The one we sent back to Earth. The one we programmed to destroy all the people on Earth. So we Niklausians may have a home again. To destroy all the people on Earth? How? Why? You ask me. You were the ones who made the seed of your own destruction. But the bombs do not obliterate. The radiation will disintegrate. When there are no living left, we robots can make it home. Nuclear war? That's unthinkable. Look, I, I know President Bruskov. He's a man of sanity. He could not start such a war. It is not he who will start it. Who then? Yourself. What? Me? In the image I have created of you and sent back to take your place. Wait a minute. Now I'm beginning to remember that, that, that machine, that scanner, and a robot that you were molding so that it would look like me. But you, you didn't. You, you, you couldn't have. I already have. He is sleeping at this moment in your bed on Earth. When he rises tomorrow, he will still believe what he has been programmed to believe. That his friend, President Bruskov, and a number of leaders from the Third World have betrayed him and are prepared to start an atomic war against America. Convinced he has no other option, he will initiate the war instead. In the resulting Holocaust, what survivors are left, we will exterminate. So that your Earth will be fit for us to occupy. Well, then what purpose am I being saved for? When we met, you felt the same urge I did. A long-forgotten urge for me. I am not like most Niklosians. My mother was alive, the last of the humans on our planet. You are the first living man I have ever known. What? I want you. You want me? You want me for what? Uh, as a luck charm? As, as a house pet? Look, I have got to stop what you say is going to happen. There is no way. There has to be. Zeta, listen to me. Now, you say that your mother was human, and you are her child. So you must have some feelings. If you, if you have any... If you have any love for me... Love? Well, what made you keep me alive? I don't know. I wanted to know, to feel, to understand why I felt these... these things in me I never... Wink. Is what I feel for you love? I doubt that. Love doesn't ask or demand. Love gives. You want me to give you something? Yes. Give me my freedom to go back and to save my world. Bog, what are you doing here? I've been listening to you plan treason against Domen and our ship. But I ran a screen so no one could listen. As commander of the ship, I have my own communications. No one can shut them down. What is it you want? Him. Why? To eliminate him, as you should have done. Leave him alone. Give me the Earth Man to destroy. And give yourself to me. And I will keep your treachery my secret. No. 
I am in no mood to argue. I will destroy him now. Don't. I warn you. How can you stop me? Like this. Oh, oh, how can you? No one is to be armed but me. You fool. I am a doctor. If I can create the simulacrum of life, do you think I would not have the power to destroy it? But we, we are deathless. Only the human spirit is that. A robot dies forever with the body. But you can give another body to... Never. It's time that all of us went down to destruction. Good Lord, he's just... He's just disintegrating. It's not a body at all. It's just a mass of wires and circuits and transistors. Is that what's sitting in place of me at this very minute? And programmed to blow up your world as you know it. I've got to get back and stop it. You can't stop it. Only I can do that. Then you have got to. I don't have to do anything. But this I can do out of free will. You said that loving was giving. I only hope we are in time. We've got to get back to the White House, Andy. I know. I have the duty in an hour. Tonight, I have the black box. The phone? Yeah, the trigger. Once the code words are spoken into it, that's the end of it all. Oh, no. No, Andy. He's not planning to use it. I don't know, honey. This has been a day to remember. Or forget. Ever since he came back from... from wherever the space nicks took him, he's been obsessed by this plot, he says. They proved to him that the other side is set to push the button. I want to tell you, the cabinet meeting was a shambles. He is not my father. Well, whatever he is, he is not the president. Yeah, that's why I had to get you away from there to talk to you for a moment. Crazy as it is, somewhere along in this afternoon, watching him, I... I knew you were right. Mm. The guy in the White House is not our president. Could you convince any of the cabinet members or, or the Veep of that? Nah, I'm just a lowly lieutenant colonel and the president's special aide. I'm still on the outside looking in. So what can we do? Yeah, try to keep cool. Nothing's happened yet. And nothing is going to happen. But you just said that... Yeah, that I was on the outside looking in. That, that's true. Except for one thing. Tonight, I have the special duty. Remember? The black box. Right. If he tries to use it, Ginny, I'm going to stop him. Are we going to announce this arrival? There is no need. I have the radar negator on. We can penetrate your DMZ and have landed before they can activate a screen. Still, to avoid the risk of upsetting an already uneasy situation... Wink. How much more would it upset if you were to announce yourself as President Alexander returning when your whole world believes you are already there? Yes, I suppose you're right. But what do we do when we land? There will be ground forces. Helpless against the force field I maintain and the one I shall throw around you. And then what happens? We find your simulacrum and I destroy him as I did Varg. And then? Then. All is as it was before we invaded your world. I will return to the mothership, and Earth will be safe. But you could stay, Zadar. You could stay and... Nothing. There is nothing for us. And I must return to take command of the Niklos 7 and drive it forever out of your orbit. But where will you go? Where well, we should have gone long ago, when we ceased to be anything but automatons. To course into the empty void of space till fuel or air runs out. And we will be no more. In the end, the ship will break up. We will all disintegrate like Vark and disappear into atomic dust. I won't let that happen to you. There is no way you can stop it. And no time to discuss it further. We are about to land. <laughs> Close the door, Colonel. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Only, uh... Only what? Uh, Ginny wanted to talk to you for a moment. Well, Ginny will have to wait. I have no time to talk to her now. Close the door. Yes, sir. Bring the box over to the desk and open it. Yes, sir. Why did you, uh, want me to open it, sir? Because I'm going to have to use it. 
use it, Mr. President? The forces of evil have bound themselves together in an unholy alliance to wipe the America we know from the face of the earth. We have no choice but to take preemptive action. Open the box and give me the phone. No, sir. What? If you disobey my orders, I'll have you shot. Yes, sir, but not much chance of that, since I'm the only one that's armed at the moment. You think for one moment that that outmoded weapon that you're pointing at me could... What's that? I'll, I'll open the window and... It's the spaceship. What's it doing here? Let me see. The door is opening. Zeta, what are you doing here? Eliminating you. <laughs> so, that is the end of it. And us, Wink? No. Don't go. I must. But I gave you something, Wink. I gave you back your world. What can I say? Only goodbye. Me and mine... We're a disease which had to be stamped out. And will be. You will never see or hear of us again. But at least once, Wink, I gave. I found out what love is all about. I would rather have lived it. But it is also worth dying for. I'll be back shortly with a final thought. The nights are lonelier than ever now for President Winston Alexander since his daughter Ginny married full Colonel Andrew Harris. Oh, they live in Georgetown, not too far away, but far away are his thoughts, far away beyond the stars, with a woman named Zaida who learned about the miracle of love just in time, but still too late. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Evie Juster, and Russell Horton. Associate Director, Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, then, pleasant dreams.